follow the finger. shite isn't it <laughs> welcome again back to uh, uh, age restorations today ford transit 2006 connect when i try and start it an actual fact let me just try and start it now and you'll hear what the issue is let me just take all just dropped one just dropped a bolt on the floor you'll hear what happens first hand and then we can run through and see what i'm going to try and do to rectify a fault. Let's get in the van. Right, key in ignition, foot on clutch just in case it's in gear, and start. Do you hear that? The hunting, and we've got a flashy glow plug light. Okay, then we'll start it again. Now she's running fine. Now trust me, because it's a warm morning, and that's the third time I've tried to start it. She'll run fine now all day. Absolutely brilliantly. But on a cold morning, that blah, 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 that happens about between five and ten times every cold morning. Not that I've tried to start many cold mornings, just been a few. But when I picked it up, it did this as well. So hence the price that I picked it up at. Um, I've done some uh, handwork, and I've kind of found out, well, I think it is. I think it's the uh, fuel pressure switch. I bought one. I have the switch. So I'm going to fit it. Here it is. It's 27 mil uh, on the outside. Fuel pressure switch, like so. So I just need to whip the old one out. And the old one, follow the finger. Is there? You see it? So what I want to do is just I've taken the cover off. In the cooler cover, which sits on there. It's two bolts. Okay, and two washers. I've well I've put these new bolts in anyway, stainless steel, stainless steel washers. Because the other one one was snapped off and one was rusted. It's an 18-year-old man, you know. So it's held on with four bolts, two there uh, and two there. And as you can see, I've not had a lot of joy not having a lot of joy means they've just sheared straight off proper sheared straight off anyway let's not let's not muff around with that i've got this one off now that's, that's the only one that unscrewed the only one but i have riv nuts so i can go and riv nut the rest and then i will have nice shiny bolts and washers and fixings on there now i should be able to oh look at that look. i should be able to lift that right up and get at it and there it is so i will endeavor to prop something under here i think my wallet should uh, keep that up high that high shouldn't it and uh, then we can have a look at the oil leaks even look at all that goo down there that's the worst part of it there so there's a catch can just there oil catch can breather system might be blocked anyway let's get to the job in hand just whip that plug off which means i have to press down this little tab and pull the electrics off, 27mm spanner, undo it, and then pop the new one back on and reconnect the plug. So let's crack on with that. Now, as you can hear, she's running sweet as a nut now. Let's just turn it off and on again. Now that wasn't straightforward. And was it the pressure switch? No, it wasn't the pressure switch. There's the old one. There's the old one there. New one is obviously installed. 
But what I did is I got my 17mm spanner with the engine running all shitty and cracky. I just cracked that off very slightly till I got a bit of spit. That one and number four, number one and number four killed the engine. So I just nipped it back up, started the engine again and carried on around until that one and then that killed the engine as well. So undo it a little bit, let fluid, let your diesel purge any air in the system because when you change this... This switch, obviously, a little bit of air has gotten in into that system. Uh, that, um, yeah, that system that uh, directs the fuel to each uh, cylinder by the pipes. So, bleed out your air, and then clean up your your bumpers. <laughs> Can't ride it, can you? Anyway, we'll try and start it tomorrow from cold, or later on today from cold, and we'll go from there and see if it's uh, improved anything. If not, I'm putting the original switch back in and keeping that new one for a spare. What's the point, isn't it? You know, uh, there's not, no point, there's point in doing that, is there? So, yeah, right, well, keep, keep watching, and uh, please excuse my stuttering, but I'm having a bit of a flare-up today. I have lupus, uh, if you don't know, guys, and uh, other things uh, which, which aren't good. So, yeah, um, now and again, brain fog kicks in, so doing stuff like this really is difficult for me, where it didn't used to be. I used to be able to bodge it up, no problem. Now it takes me hours to bodge it up. Right, I'll get to see you in a bit. Okie dokie. I've got some bolts to fucking drill, drill and tap out. Okay, carrying on. Uh, now I need to address these nasty snapped bolts. Or screws, sorry screws. So I am now going to use my tool of choice. These things are flipping brilliant. Got me a set of three, baby, medium size, and daddy, which is in the shed. So we're going to clamp that on the bottom there because there's not a lot left on the top to grab hold of. So, yeah, right, we have no movement there at all. Right, let's add a little bit of heat. Doing this with one hand isn't ideal. Come on, you can do it easy. Use your foot, man. Right, we've got a flame. We've got a flame. Right in the middle. The peak of the inner blue flame is the hottest point. Just training it on what's left of that bolt. Screw. Screw. Here. Yeah. It's, it's a scroll. Okay. So that should kill uh, all the rest of it. So I'm going to give that another five seconds. Okay. Now I need to shut that off. Bit cack, innit? I had this on for so long once that the plastic knob melted off so that's what I'm doing with that right let's give it a quick blast okay you're watching you're watching as I do it right let's give this a bit of a wig there we go works every time okay so that's good unfortunately that is enclosed <laughs> so i don't know what i'm going to do with that yet this one here i've already cracked off i thought i'd record this one just to show you guys that uh see this is brilliant about vice grip these these aren't vice grip these are something else but it's easier to press down than it is to lift the lever up press down just to release as he says denton is uh red uh intercooler so yeah that's all good isn't it and this one here I did that uh, earlier. As you can see, that's really okay. Just need to wind them out now, but I'm going to use two hands to get it done properly. There we go. Ha! So yeah, decent set of clamps, grips, vice grips, mold grips, whatever you want to use. Make sure they're a decent, good quality set. As soon as you burn that end over, you ain't got a chance. Uh, add some heat, put your clamps on, cool, once you've heated it for a good minute or so, give it a squirt, some shock to shock cool it, 
break that seal and then get on there with your grips or your clamps or whatever and, and unwind it. Do it up, unwind it, do it up, unwind it, work it out. Just don't try and unwind it because there's still rust on the thread that's still in there. And uh, it won't end well. So yeah, so that, that's three out of the four sorted out. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get to that other one. Don't think I can. If that's the case, I'm just gonna do what I always do. Oh my God, look at the, look at the fucking state of that sky coming. Nice and sunny. Shit. I better get my finger out, hadn't I? I need to um, board the ceiling in the back of the van today. It has to be done today, no question, because the boards are in Caroline's um, utility room. It's a shed. It's just a shed. She calls it a fucking shed. Uh, and they're in her way, so I need to get them out of there, get them in the back of the van, I need to insulate the ceiling, soundproof the ceiling, uh, all the rest of it, and whack them up somehow. Rather, but um, I thought I'd just do this little job of the starting and the stuttering first, just to get that little job out of the way, and also uh, lifting the intercooler up out of the way. I can uh, put my peepers in there and have a really good squint and see if I can see where that oil is coming from. I'm sure it's that breeder, that catch can. Right, it's probably full, uh, and that's just what's going on. Uh, with the intercooler being blocked with all the stuff from the circulating hot, hot gases and smoke and um, carbon and all that shit, it's, it's just building up pressure in the wrong places and blowing back, so. Because I'm, I'm sick and tired. Every time I need to take the van out, getting underneath. Pulling that fucking great tray out that I've got underneath it and putting it in the back garden and then going on my way doing my, my business of worrying small children. <laughs> I shouldn't even, should even joke about that. I'm sorry. So scrap that. Edit. We'll edit that bit out. All right. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't have anything left to say. I'm embarrassed now because it's show. Yeah. So, um, the oil thing, the oil leak is definitely the next major fix. Then I could change the oil, change the filter. I've done the air filter yesterday, the other one was not good. The old one was really not good, but nowhere near as bad as a pollen filter. And if you haven't seen the pollen filter yet, video, please, just scoot back a bit and go and have a look at the pollen filter. I've never seen, in all my 57 years, I've never seen... Uh, uh, a pollen filter, not that I had pollen filters back then, but you know what I'm saying? I've never seen pollen filter that thick before. I thought it was a brick in there. I, I didn't even realise it was a pollen filter until I yeah, got it out. Right, I'm going to crack on with this. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you'll see the finished product in two seconds. A bit more than that. Right, you are. Right, I've just found one of these things. HSS4341 Hashtag one. It's supposed to be one of those sort of like easy out type things, but it comes with the correct drill bit on the other end. How cool is that? It's from China. I don't hold out much hope. Anyway, these these three are out. One, two, and threads. So I just need now to drill into there a little bit and then turn this around and reverse rate it, and that should that but I'm gonna heat that I'm gonna drill it first then heat it then squirt it then heat it again and then unwear it yeah I've bought over a selection of stainless steel uh, Torx 3 uh, not Torx uh, Phillips 3 heads uh, and penny washers hopefully the penny washers will fit in this gap here oh look at that made to measure it's quite jiffy isn't it Right, let me crack on then and uh, see how we get on. Right. Should we just do it? Should we just do it? Let's just do it. Now, normally I'd go and get my punch and I'd centralise on this bolt and go from there. But as you can see, I'm uh, winging it. It's going to get my punch. Thank you, dear. Uh, anywhere, really, as long as it's um, just on, on the floor, sweetheart, thanks. I need to go and get a punch anyway, so can you punch me? Yeah. 
Well, I had to turn that bit around and use a proper drill bit because that one just uh, got laughed at. So I used my HSS cobalt uh, drill. Uh, I think that's a 2.5 uh, mil, something like that. Went straight in. Now look at this little sausage. I've put that reverse thread uh, easy out on it. And let's. Uh, we go so that is not going to focus because it's just not look at that bloody excellent so yeah that does work right uh, yeah the sky isn't getting any any showing you so that's good so we've got four out of four I'm um, just gonna whiz a six mil or m6 tap down through that hole, I've done the other three already, squirt them out, put some copper slip grease in there, most important, so it doesn't seize up again the next time, in the next 100 years, 18 years. And uh, you can get them bolts back in there and fixed down. I could start on the back of the vehicle, uh, putting that boarding in. So for now, that's it. This was basically about changing that sensor. Should we just see if it will start again? It's been a while and the engine's cold. Oh shit, I've got my coffee. Forget me, boo! Mm. I'm still quite hot, that's pretty good. Kettle works. Oh, I'm glad some it does. Right, let's try to start it again. Just, just to see if anything is woody nilly. sorted that oh that would go i am still when i go in there deep dive into the engine bay to find that oil leak i'm still going to change those four glow plugs just part of the course they've been in there a long time but look they look like the originals because they are proper skanky that now guys please this is the end of the video can you please help me out here this is a intercooler it basically cools down the air going into the intake system uh, from the turbo it's a radiator but it just is supposed to just have air in it you know to flow and cool down the air as the car goes by the ram scoop gets scooped in there through there cools the air down everybody's happy now this is going to be clogged up with oil and all sorts of carbon and shit what would you soak that in to clean it out what what do you know of any product I, do you know of any product that will do that once it soaks into a bath it's going to piss them around at any second now please drop a comment below and I'll catch you guys on the next episode thanks for watching